Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's uh, Monday, July the 13th, and today I'd like to talk about HC, which is the calculated altitude. Last Monday on July the 6th, we were down at Toronto Harbour Front and we took three sightings and we took an average. And then on Wednesday, July the 8th, we calculated the apparent altitude HA. And then on Friday, uh, July the 10th, we calculated the observed altitude. So let's just look at um, our results that we received then on July the 6th, I'm just looking at it on my last post for the observed altitude. On July the 6th, uh, we had three readings. The average reading was 63 degrees, 32.25 minutes. This was a lower limb reading of the sun. And then what we did is we applied uh, an index error correction for the sextant of minus one minute. And we also allowed for a dip angle, and we subtracted three minutes for that. So then we got the HA as 63 degrees, 28.25 minutes. Then on Wednesday, what we did is we allowed for refraction, okay, because light bends. So that was 0.5 of a minute. And then we had to add the semi-diameter to bring uh, our observed value to the center of the sun, and that was 15.7 minutes, which we got from the nautical almanac. So that gave us um, an H. O of 63 degrees, 43.45 minutes, or 63.724 degrees. So today what I'd like to do is I'd like to calculate HC. So let's look at um, this diagram here. This diagram is just under the, uh, the post for HC. And what we have here is this is the Earth, and we have a plane. This plane and the plane of the paper or the plane of the screen here is a plane uh, perpendicular to the observer and it goes through the great circle distance between C and GP. Now GP is the geographic position so the Sun is over here and rays of the Sun um, leave the Sun and strike the Earth. So the GP is, de uh, is defined as the intersection between a line from the center of the uh, center of the sun or the celestial body to the center of the earth. So where it intersects the surface of the earth is the ge geographic position. Now the nautical almanac lists the GP uh, for the sun, the planets, and 57 navigational stars for every hour for the whole year. So we can determine from the nautical almanac where the GP was for the sun uh, on July the 6th uh, at our average time of 16.06 GMT. So this plane then is perpendicular to the great circle distance between the observer who is in Toronto, or observer at position C, A is the GP. That plane inter intersects the uh, great circle distance and passes through the center of the Earth. So these are light rays coming from the Sun and we can see that this angle here, ZD, is also equal to this angle ZD because this line is parallel to that line. So this angle from Euclidean geometry is equal to that angle. Now there's the angle, the theoretical, theoretical calculated angle the sun makes with the observer horizon there. So the observer horizon is perpendicular to uh, this radius arm that goes from the Earth's center to where the observer stands. So if we know ZD, then we know this said D and therefore 90 degrees because this is a right angle here we know that 90 degrees minus said D is HC so all we have to do is determine this great cir circle distance AC how we do that well we go to what's called the navigational triangle here's the navigational triangle down there there's B the North Pole there's um, our known location at Harbor Front we know its latitude and longitude there is a sun geographic position. How do we get that? Well, we go to the nautical almanac, and I'll show you that in a minute, and we determine the latitude and the longitude from there. So here's a spherical triangle. We know the North Pole. We know this position. We know that position. This is the meridian that goes through the North Pole and uh, Toronto. This meridian here, we know its length. It's A. How do we know its length? Well, uh, we know the latitude of C. The latitude of B is 90 degrees, so this distance here is equal to the co-latitude of C, or 90 degrees minus the latitude, so we can work that out in radians. And this distance here, this distance here is the co-latitude of A. So we know this distance and this distance, and we know this angle. This angle is the difference in uh, longitudes. 
So, okay, so we can solve this spherical triangle. Here's the Psychos Lab script file that solves a spherical triangle, and it gives us an HC of 63.690 degrees, and it also gives us an angle C. This angle C is known as the azimuth, so it's the angle, uh, if you're the, the observer, where is a GP located? Well, this is the angle from uh, north that you would look along to see the GP. Now let's look at this uh, spreadsheet here. This spreadsheet shows us, um, this is a subset. Um, I'm using the online uh, nautical almanac here because it's easier to uh, look at the values and copy them. So uh, there's the sun and the moon. Uh, that's the hour. So at 1600, the uh, Greenwich hour angle of the sun was 58 degrees, 46.5 minutes and the declination was 22 degrees 35.4 minutes now we have to adjust this we can use an interpo inter interpo interpolation routine with us with a calculator or we can just go to increments and corrections at the back of the almanac we've got an extra six minutes to add on here so if you look up uh, in the back of the almanac for one uh, for one uh, for six minutes you'll get one degree 30 minutes to add on to uh, this 58 degrees 46.5 minutes so that turns out to be 16 60 degrees 16.5 minutes and as far as the deck goes notice that between 1600 and 1700 is only 0.3 of a uh, minute there difference and we've got six minutes so six minutes divided by 60 is a tenth of that. So really it's not much change. So we'll leave it at 35.4. Uh, so that's, that's how we locate the GP. Down here, we've seen this before. This is a script file for the dip calculation. It gives us three minutes. And there's a, there's a formula that worked, we worked out for the uh, refraction, 0.5 minutes. Here's the script file for the great circle distance and bearings. This is um, a solution of the navigational triangle using the spherical cosine law and that gives us 63.69 degrees and the bearing or azimuth is 136.9 degrees. Now I also like to check my results uh, a couple of ways. So over here what I'm doing is I'm using Google Earth and I'm putting in the known location and the Sun GP and seeing what my distance is it's 2922.95 or 2923 degrees uh, sorry uh, kilometers 136.9 degrees so that's the same azimuth if you go over to the spherical triangle you'll see that b is 2925 so that's very close so google earth uh, agrees with our result and then down here what i've used is the admiralty a british admiralty nav pack uh, computer program to see what I get there, and I get the same thing. 136, 56.6 minutes is 136.9 degrees, same azimuth. And uh, 63 degrees 41 minutes is the same um, calculated altitude as well. So I've checked my uh, values uh, a couple of ways just to make sure I get the, the right result. And if you want to use the nautical almanac, uh, what you have to do is you have to make um, so that the tables are, are precise and can go in the back of the book, they make a few simplifications in the nautical almanac. It's called the NAO Concise Site Reduction Form. So there's our estimated latitude and longitude. Now what they do is they say, look, um, we're only going to put in values for integral values of latitude. So what's the closest whole number of latitude degrees? So 44 is the closest there. And then what they ask you to do is they ask you to pick a longitude such that the local hour angle, the local hour angle is the difference between your Greenwich hour angle of the sun and your longitude. So the sun's Greenwich hour angle is 60 degrees, 16.6 minutes. So you pick, uh, you pick your uh, assumed longitude so that these minutes cancel out. So instead of 79.25, I'm using 79.16.6. So the assumed position then for the NAO is slightly different than your known position. Uh, and you get a, a value here of 63 degrees 28 minutes instead of 41 minutes and a slightly different angle, uh, 136.8 degrees. 
Okay, so the, NA, the NAO form gives you a good result for your assumed position, which in this case is slightly different from your actual position. So then just to summarize then, in the last week we looked at HS, we looked at HA, we looked at HO, and we looked at HC. The next step will be to use the difference. The difference between HO and HC is called the intercept. So in our particular case, it's 63.724 degrees minus 63.69. It turns out to be about 2.04 minutes. Now, what we did on Monday is we took an average reading and we took it close to when the sun was highest. So really an average probably was not such a good idea at that time because it's not a straight line. So if you look at the reading of um, closer to uh, Yeah, this is the reading. If I, if, it, if I just consider the reading at 1607, you'll see the intercept here was very low. It was less than one minute. So probably in that particular case, I should have just taken uh, just one reading instead of taking an average because I say the, the curve is compressing. It's not a straight line. But in any case, our intercept here was two minutes. So it's, it's a little bit high. Don't expect uh, on my particular sextant, the micrometer drum reads down to one minute. So expecting anything uh, way beyond one minute is, is, is probably not realistic. So two minutes is a little bit high. But anyways, that's my intercept. So that means that my line of position is 2.04 nautical miles towards the azimuth. So what we'll do in our next post is I'll take, I'll go down to the same location. I'll take a simultaneous reading of the sun and, and the moon. I'll try and get both. And what we'll do is we'll use the intercept uh, reading for both uh, to get two bearings or two lines of position and an intersection to see how close we are to where we really are. This is what's called the Mark St. Hilaire method.